the 15 best websites to find data science jobs. That's what we're going to cover in this video, as well as everything you need to know about how to use these websites to successfully land a job. There will be three categories of jobs in this video. We have the standard jobs, where you're basically an employer at a company. We're also going to cover freelance jobs, and finally, remote jobs that you can do from home and even live anywhere. The first website on this list is Dice, and I'm not talking about the developer of Battlefield or this thing, but the job platform. There their objective is to help you find jobs in tech. And this is a very simple yet really powerful job searching platform specializing in tech jobs. Now, of course, you can do the basic job searches. But what I also like is that they actually have a matching feature. Once you personalize your search, you'll be able to find job listings that match you and your profile according to your skills, your needs and your different goals. Often a lot of time is just wasted on filtering through jobs that aren't even relevant and that we aren't even qualified for. But here you can focus on only tech jobs and you can actually match them to your profile, which I think is really convenient. Now, next up, we have Glassdoor. And I think a lot of you guys are familiar with this one. And for Glassdoor, I have a lot of love and hate for this website. I think most people use this one to compare salaries, which is one thing that you can do. And they basically have people fill out their salaries. So they have a lot of data about what people make in different industries and different companies and jobs. When it comes to the amount of jobs, you will likely not find as many as on LinkedIn or Indeed or these huge huge employment websites, but you can still find some really good job listings. Now a tip when looking for jobs here on this platform, but also on any other website is to try to see when they were posted. If you find a job that's like 30 days old, sure, it could be because they haven't found a candidate, but it could also just be that they didn't remove the job listing. They might have already hired someone or they're currently doing interviews and companies are run by humans and people forget things all the time. So if you just spend all of your time applying for old jobs, you're just going to be wasting a lot of the time. Some are going going to be like 24 hours or a few days, which is much better to apply to. All right, so let's talk about number three, which is going to be Monster. Now, Monster is a job platform and one of the top platforms around the world with around 25 years of experience connecting people and different jobs. The site has a few main features. And first, we have the job platform, which is pretty basic, but very useful. And all you do is basically input your job title or a keyword here, and then the location that you wish to apply for. It's very similar to LinkedIn, and they have a quick apply features so you could just upload your resume and then apply to as many of the jobs as you want in about 15 seconds and that is actually a huge time saver in addition to this they also have a salary feature to help you figure out what you should be expecting and i think this is a great feature especially when negotiating your salary because if you don't know what you could make you're probably going to be settling for less than you should the next site is linkedin and did you know that a lot of people use linkedin the wrong way yes linkedin is great for jobs i mean the job platform is fantastic it's one of the most popular. But if you optimize your profile and you tailor it to your desired role, and then you start to build a network, then there's a good chance that you'll be seen by a recruiter or somebody in your network that's actually hiring for this job. Yes, LinkedIn is this really awkward social media platform where everyone's trying to look professional and where every post sounds like something ripped from a bad motivational speech. But it can also be really helpful for your job search if you do put some time into it. Next, we're going to talk about Indeed. And the thing about Indeed is that they have a lot of features that people don't necessarily necessarily use. If I go here on data analyst jobs, I can actually click encourage to apply. And then I can find plenty of jobs where they specifically encourage people without a degree to apply to them. You can also click on job type. So for example, if you look for a part time job or something, it might be a little bit difficult because getting a part time job is not easy, especially as a beginner, but you can still use this feature to help you find one. They also have the experience level. So if you're entry level, you can put that and they have an education filter as well. So you could just select your education level, whatever degree you have, or if you don't have a degree, and you can match companies that look for your uh, skills. It's a great idea to use these filters on Indeed or any other platform to save a lot of time when applying, because I know that it can be really frustrating checking through a job description and then seeing that you don't meet the requirements. Sometimes it can still be worth applying anyway, even if you don't meet the qualifications exactly, but this could just save you a lot of hassle. I do want to warn you though, because if you only use the filters, you will miss some of the jobs. And that's because unfortunately, not every job listing will accurately have these filters. So I do recommend that you also spend some time without any filters and you may find some hidden gems that you would have otherwise missed because you only used a filter. Now let's get into all the remote work stuff. And I know a lot of you guys want to work remotely. So now I'm going to share some websites that I recommend. The first one is remote.co. And guess what kind of jobs they exclusively post? I think it's pretty obvious. This is one of the most popular websites for remote jobs and perhaps actually the biggest one out there. And while it looks 
looks kind of shady in my opinion. Like, it's certainly not the most beautiful website, right? It's actually legit, and all of the jobs on this website are going to be remote. Now, I'm not sure if I'll be able to find a lot of data jobs right now, as it kind of depends on what I search for, and many times the jobs may not exactly be called a data analyst. And in general, I think that the jobs on this website, as with most remote job websites, go pretty fast, because especially it's a really popular website. But what you can do is that you can bookmark this website and go back and check once in a while and see if there are any new jobs that you can apply to right away. All right, the next remote job platform is called Remote OK. This is a very popular website for good reason, and my only concern with this one is that it's almost too popular. I mean, I mean, the jobs get a lot of applications, but you can also find some gems if you're lucky. All of the jobs are remote, so all you have to do is just click and type in data science, and we'll see if we find something. Now, don't forget to search for different keywords, because oftentimes one search is not going to show all the jobs, so make sure you do that so you don't miss any of the jobs. Remote job site number three is going to be Flex Jobs. Now, Flex Jobs has been around since 2007, helping people find remote jobs way before it was a big thing. Now, unfortunately, even after 17 years, the site still looks like somebody designed it in WordPress in 15 minutes. Nevertheless, it's well known and highly appreciated by a lot of people. The only thing is that FlexJobs isn't actually a free site. Now, they do have a free 14-day trial for, I think, $2.95. And after that, it seems to be 15 bucks a month. And you might be thinking, why would anyone pay for a job search website when there are so many free ones available? And honestly, I don't know, but people are doing it and they seem happy. One reason is because they do have hand screen jobs, which means that they're focusing a lot on removing spam and stuff, which can be really annoying, especially on LinkedIn and Indeed. There's a lot of scammers on LinkedIn now trying to steal all of your information. Now, Flex Jobs actually have a few other benefits as well. And I don't really have anything bad to say about this site other than the fact that it's not free because they do offer quite a few features features that might be worth paying for if you have the money available. But again, it's not a free site, so that's definitely a downside. The next one is called We Work Remotely. And this website looks a lot nicer compared to the prior one. Isn't it beautiful? This website is really good because they have a lot of jobs where you can work from anywhere in the world. And this is both if you're somebody traveling or if you're just living in another country. And working remotely also opens you up to a ton of other opportunities because you're not limited to your location. So while the competition is a downside, because there are a lot of people that want remote jobs, there's also the positive aspects as well. Now, companies pay about 300 bucks to post one single job listing on this website, which means that they're actually serious about hiring people. So if you spend time applying to one of these jobs, then at least it's going to be a real job listing that you're applying to. All right, so let's get into the next section, which is going to be the freelancing jobs. And these jobs are remote jobs, but they're also more independent and you're working as a contractor rather than as a full-time employee, even though you can still work full-time, of course. You can actually earn a lot of money by doing this, and there are quite a few people that prefer being a freelancer, whereas some people prefer being an employee, as both are great options. I'm going to mention websites for beginners, but the first one is a little bit different, and it's called TopTal. This freelance website is great if you want extremely high pay and work at top companies and startups. I think everybody wants that, but to accomplish this, you'll also need to be in the top of your job category. Their objective is connecting the top 3% of freelance talent to the top companies. They're working with companies like Sendesk, Duolingo, Shopify, and many more. So what does their 3% criteria actually mean? Well, it means exactly 3%. And they have a screening process, and then once you're in, you can apply to as many jobs as you want on the platform. It's kind of like signing up for a website, but once you make it through the process, then you can just apply to any of the jobs. You don't have to, you know, get screened for every single job listing. Now, according to their own data, 26% of applicants pass the first first stage, but there are a lot of stages. Then for the skill review, only 7% of the total number of candidates pass this stage. In the next live screening, only 3.6% pass, so about half the people don't pass that one as well. Finally, there's a test project and their final step, which only 3% of the total pass. So it's really difficult to get in and get accepted, but once you're in, you can make a lot of money and find some really good opportunities with the top companies. Now, if you're a beginner, that's clearly not going to be the best site for you, and instead, I would recommend guru.com, which could be a better option for you. Now, they're also talking about hiring expert freelancers, but they are way more lenient than TopTal. There are hundreds of thousands of freelancers in all sorts of categories, so here it's really about figuring out a way to stand out for yourself. If you can, I would offer a niche service, something very specific that kind of makes you unique, whatever you want to do. You can also set your price lower in the beginning until you get some testimonials and experience and try to build up that way. There are a lot of different options to get started.
started. You can also use Upwork. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Upwork because I think there are a lot of spam and you will spend a lot of time just applying for jobs instead of actually working and making money. But many people are using Upwork successfully. But if you are able to find some good gigs and actually work long term with somebody, it can be a great platform to make a lot of money. They also have a talent section where companies can find you. So make sure to put a lot of your effort into your profile. There's also Fiverr, which is a very similar platform. Now, I actually like Fiverr because they offer really specific services and often shorter contracts and gigs. So you don't have to be an expert at everything or work all the time. You can just really niche down into something and become very good at it and do that whenever you have some spare time. Now, Fiverr is also trying to break into the premium marketplace and they now have something called Fiverr Pro and as well as some other ways to work with more premium clients over longer periods of time. So if you're doing a basic web development gig on Fiverr, you're probably absolutely screwed due to competition. But if you find the right thing to do, it's a fantastic platform. All right, platform number 15, Freelancer. Now it's kind of like a mix between Fiverr, Upwork and all of the other freelance platforms all in one. You can also browse jobs posted by companies and see if you find anything interesting. Now I do want to say that the jobs tend to go away quite quickly on this platform. So if you are there early, you will have a much better chance of landing the job. Now to succeed, you'll need the right skills. And one way to learn is through online courses. I made a video about the top 10 data courses and it went viral. People loved it and you can check it out somewhere over here on the screen. I have no idea where it is, but it's somewhere there. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.